So I said in my pitch for this talk that no glam organization and provides truly open data, and this makes me a little sad. Now, I'm not going to go into why you should open your data. There's a great uh, presentation called The Future is Open by uh, Michael Edison, which I recommend that you take a look at if you need to be convinced. The good news is um, that there's very few, if any, organizations worldwide who are doing it right, so we're not alone. But what is right? Well, firstly, we should define data. And sometimes it's easy to define what data isn't. Data is not metadata. Data is not numbers. Data is not charts. Data is not image files. And data is not essays. Data is all of the things. Data is everything that your organization outputs. To steal a proverb, one man's essay is another man's corpus of text mining training data. And when you think about it, an image is simply a data, data in a point of time. Now, so if we think about data like this, and we want to make it open, how do we know if we've made it open? And contrary to popular belief, open data is not a CC license. Now, NZ Goal, along with other tools, are great initiatives, and we hear a lot about these in the glam sector. Here are another couple of uh, initiatives that people use. But we actually have the rather dryly titled New Zealand Data and Information Management Principles, which came out in 2011. And when you look at it, it's a great framework for thinking about what open data actually means in practice. Now, there are seven principles. Open, protected, readily available, trusted and authoritative, well-managed, reasonably priced, reusable. And we dive into uh, these one by one. We can easily measure ourselves against these principles. So let's do that. Open. Data should be open. You need a really, really good reason not to release it. Now, I'm not going to go into the OIA in seven minutes, but national security probably isn't the reason why you're choosing not to open something. Well, the archivist at the GCSB may beg to differ. So what is your moral argument for not opening something? Protected. Yes, of course some items may be personal and confidential, so how do we deal with these? At what point does a soldier's medical records become accept, uh, publishing a soldier's medical record become acceptable? For our sector, I would go further and bring in issues of cultural sensitivity. The National Library has a really good policies around this, and maybe this is something that we can work on as a sector to come up with a starting point for all organizations to follow. Readily available. You think about making information readily available from day one. You don't give Google something and not everybody else. And you need to make sure it's well documented and easy to find. Have a page or a catalog outlining what data you have in your policies and list, these, list the data sets in data.govt.nz. Wouldn't it be great if you go to netlib slash data, te papa slash data, Auckland Museum slash data, and know that you'll find their open data policies and what they have available? Earlier today, there were questions about licensing, what the licensing was in the Cenotaph uh, database, as it's not clear on their website. And even though it contains a lot of reusable content and access via the Auckland Museum API, no one would know that by visiting the site. Trusted and authoritative and well-managed. Right, we should have this nailed, right? That's what we do, we're memory institutions. On the flip side, uh, don't be afraid to open something that isn't perfect. People will forgive you if you're upfront about your imperfections. Reasonably priced. A pretty binary decision here. The cost of dissemination is trending to zero, and there's no reason to charge uh, for the data if, it's a re if you're a reasonable-sized organization. In fact, charging can cost you money. We have yet to see an organization that makes a profit from licensing images when people's time has been taken into account. Now, I get the issue with small museums, uh, that small museums face with funding, and selling images can help. A few hundred dollars a year can make a real difference when the request is being fulfilled by volunteers. Reusable. So this is kind of the nuts and the bolts, so let me dig a little deeper here. Original versions. So I don't care how good your lossy JPEG is, it's a source or it isn't original. Now feel free to provide reusable derivatives as a default, but only derivatives that is not original. You may protect these behind some form of key to limit the effects of network traffic, but they should still be readily available if requested. Uh, reusable. It needs to have a proper license. In New Zealand, the NZ Goal license is understood and well documented. But let me reiterate, non-commercial licenses are not truly open. Machine-readable format. So understand how coders think. If we can write a script to do something, then we will. Make sure that your data can be downloaded and processed with a script. 
This can be as simple as uh, dumping a CSV file on your web server or as complex as an API. A data dump of some key fields and a URL to the uh, original image is a perfect starting point for most collection data sets. You don't need to get fancy. With metadata, well-documented data is critical. I can't tell you the number of times I've run into an API only to find that I can't get it to work. Just last week with the Cooper Hewitt API, it took me a few tries to work out if the has images parameter needed a yes, a true, or a one uh, as a value. There are a bunch of tools out there now which make it really easy to document your API and data sets, so use them. Um, in aggregate or modified forms if they cannot be released in the original state. Because sometimes we can't release the originals. If you have a data set with lots of personal information and is something that you want to or should release, but think about what you can release. Is there an aggregated data that you can release? Can you strip personal information and still release it? In open, non-proprietary formats. Data and information released in proprietary formats are also released in non-proprietary uh, formats. Sometimes you do want to release something in a proprietary format to make it really easy to integrate with some industry standard software. That's okay, as long as you release it in an open format as well. Also go further and to say that you should release the data in simple formats, even if you're releasing it in an open, hard to use format. DRM, digital rights uh, technologies, are not imposed on materials made available for reuse. No watermarks, no DRM. So, in conclusion, there you have it, seven principles and seven minutes that can guide you in opening data and help you measure where you're at. So where does your organization uh, measure up? Thanks.